All right, so this is the 1972 Chevy C10 that I'm working on. I'm trying to get it ready to drive on the street. You can see right there I got my sticker and I have insurance on and everything. Okay, so about two months ago I put a wideband O2 sensor on it, an AEM uh, gauge, whatever you call it. So I just want to do kind of like an update and give my thoughts and kind of like what my first impression of it is. I would say the number one thing to do is to make sure everything is ready to drive it on the street before you even buy your AEM wide, wideband, before you even try to tune it. And the reason why, it's pretty useless to try to tune it in the driveway. What are you going to do? Rev it and watch the gauge and set the idle or whatever. I'll get into that in a minute and show some other stuff that I learned about the, this whole thing since I started. Okay, so this is the carburetor I'm trying to tune. What's funny is I just realized this. I've been calling it an Edelbrock for, in so many of my videos, but it's actually a Carter AFB, which is the same thing. But whenever I got it, it had one of the idle adjustment screws broke off inside here. That's why they're different. That's also kind of like why I put this tuning thing on pause a little bit, because I had ordered these kind of idle adjustment screws on eBay. The problem with the aftermarket screws that I got from eBay, they were, they're actually too short for the spring to fit under them. So I couldn't use a spring. Okay, so one of the points I wanted to make about, about this, that carburetor is the same thing as the Edelbrock, right? And these carburetors are known for one thing, in my opinion. They're known to be able to stick on like a stock 350 and just kind of leave it alone. It might not run like super great it might not be as tunable as a holly but it's kind of one of those carburetors that works pretty good maybe has some flat spots here or there you can buy tuning kits for them whatever but most people just leave them alone and the reason i'm saying that is because in my opinion don't go out and waste your money on the wideband do that last make that one of the last priorities unless for some reason <laughs> You know you're having major fueling issues or, or some kind of problems, but if it's running decent, it's not going to be a game changer. I don't think so. That's just my opinion. If you're having problems with one of those carburetors that are real simple, kind of like this uh, Carter or an Edelbrock or like a Rochester 2GC or something, instead of trying to use a wideband and figure something out, clean it really, really good. Every single little port passage hole in it everywhere clean it and make sure nothing is stopped up and using air on that doesn't really work you have to do something like this like you could take a wire brush pluck some of the wires out and make sure you can physically uh, clean everything on the carburetor and most likely it will work at least decent so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and pull those two idle adjustment screws and put my two new ones with springs and then show what I'm talking about, how like, as, as long as you do the factory preset, which most carburetors are the same on this one for some weird reason, usually what you do is you just run it all the way, all the way in, and then one and a half turns out, and that's supposed to be like a ballpark of where you need to be, and it's actually, for the most part, in my experience, it's already set. I just leave it like that and just drive it. I, I hard, maybe I might go back after a month and kind of change it a little bit, but it's, it's pretty much... I ordered me some new brand name Edelbrock, Edelbrock ones off of eBay. The difference is like $8 for these, and these are like, 20 something, like $22. You see that? Just put them in there. Run them all the way down until they bottom out. One and a half turns out. Here goes. One half. One. One and a half. And there. It should, it should actually run pretty good, just like that. I'm going to put my air cleaner back on. See, it starts right up in idle. It's perfect. Why would you even need to adjust it? 
that's what I've been saying. One and a half turns out usually is right on or pretty close. Okay, so maybe it is a little bit rich. Let me put it in gear real fast. Okay, so the truck is running at about 180 degrees. And for a little bit, you've seen it hang out about 14.2. It did that after I revved it. It didn't really, it kind of hung out up there a little bit. And then it would settle back down to about 13.7. Okay, so then the AFR started hanging out around 12.7 to 13. And maybe I made some mistakes. Maybe the engine wasn't fully warmed up. And then also something else I discovered, I figured out that my throttle wasn't closing all the way. So then I started physically closing it. Like, yeah, you let off the gas, but the spring wasn't shutting it all the way. It would hold it up at about 900 or so. Anyway, so yeah, maybe I made a mistake in this whole tuning thing I did so far is bogus. But that's the type of stuff that you might go through. And that's the reason why I keep saying that you need to do everything else and this needs to be the last thing to do because everything else needs to be worked out maybe timing issues maybe vacuum leaks maybe you know all kinds of stuff anyway see here's the thing i can already tell you that's a little bit rich because it kind of smells like fuel a little bit like the exhaust kind of smells a little bit and it was hanging out around 12.6 12 12 to about 12.8. So what that means is you need to lean it out a little bit. But see, I didn't even really need the wide band for that. I could have done this without it. So what I'm going to do is just do a quarter turn in on both of them. And then it'll probably be quarter turn on both of them. It's close enough. Looks like man, that wasn't enough. So I'm gonna do another quarter turn on both of them. done one more quarter turn I did another quarter turn. I forgot how many that was, but now it's idling. It's kind of jumping around too much. And the reason I say to do this last, because you kind of need to work out all the other bugs first, because one more thing it was doing is I noticed it would idle. Sometimes it'd be idle a thousand, sometimes it'd be, you know, erratic, but my throttle spring is not closing it all the way sometimes. So I have to go over there and make sure it's all the way flat and bring it down to 700, around 700. And like just little things like that. And also, I think it's a little bit too erratic. It's jumping around too much. Like sometimes you put it in gear. I don't know. It's, it's jumping around too much to be. Um, it's just jumping around too much. One more thing, I don't know if you heard that pop, this truck has old gas in it. 
And I'm pretty sure that's what does that is whenever the fuel gets moisture in it, especially if you have muff like loud mufflers, it'll sit there and idle and you can hear it go poop. And I'm pretty sure that's just water in the gas. So yeah, there's, there's some things I need to get worked out. And then here goes another one. I can't even see my timing line, my timing mark on my balance. So I timed it with the vacuum gauge, which I really don't like doing that. But it would have been smarter to spend that $200 on a balance that has all the numbers on it and actually time it and maybe have some money left over for some fuel. <laughs> that's almost like my main point of this is like, that's not going to be a game changer if you already have like a decent running vehicle. It's, I don't know, that's just my opinion. The real reason I got that is because I'm going to try to put a turbo on something. I'm definitely going to need it for that. And then when I'm actually start to drive it and see where it's at, may, maybe it will, you know, may, maybe I'll completely change my mind. But then that still goes back to you need to have every, all the other bugs worked out first and then do this. I think I said that like 9,000 times. Problems. My back wheels are locked up a while back and I undid the adjustment, loosened it up. And I think my brakes are not working very good. Before I actually get into the real tuning part of it, which is like drivability and stuff, I got to fix those brakes. And I don't know. Maybe put some better gas in it. Maybe, maybe that's part of why it's jumping all over the place. I really don't know at the moment. This might be kind of a dumb test, but check this out. You see the water? I'm gonna sweep across for about a thousand to two thousand RPMs. Okay, that's about 1200 and smooth. That's about 2000. Okay, about 1500, 1700. Idle, you can expect it to be a little bit bumpy, but see it smooths out. Now, past 2000, it smooths out again. All right, what I was trying to show there is that that motor vibrates. So, Tune with the wide band. Okay, and motor vibe. I mean, you see what I'm saying? There's so many issues that are more important than the air fuel being perfect. It's already good enough to run. But the thing that I did get educated with that wide band is I'm not gonna lie to you, I've messed with these cars for years, but I've never really dug that deep into this kind of stuff. I just put it on there, run it, who cares? A lot of these engines shudder like that, in my opinion. A lot of these that's a rebuilt motor. And um with new pistons and stuff in it that might not exactly match up. I don't know if that's what it is or not, but I'm gonna say several inches like that would shutter whenever you rev it. You know, everybody says that, oh, you can rebuild it without balancing them. Yeah, people's been doing that for years. Most of them don't get balanced. They don't, that's the truth. But I think a lot of them do vibrate a little bit. And see, before I had the wide band, I would've just kind of assumed that maybe that was the carburetor doing that. Maybe, you know, maybe as it sweeps across that RPM, maybe it just hits a spot where it's not getting the right fuel for a little bit, and that's what does that. But guess what? I didn't show that, but when you sweep across there slowly like that, the the AFR the AFR gauge stays con very consistent. It's not that's not what it is. Something else is making that motor vibrate. So what? So what do I do about it? There's a possibility that that could possibly be an ignition problem. hopefully hopefully because that's easy just put because and then to, to to support that those wires have touched the headers a lot and they probably are burnt so before I even try to go do more tuning with the wide band I got to figure out what that vibration is possibly maybe it's a little bit erratic because maybe it's missing but I don't hear it missing I don't know 
but I just have to dig into it and figure it out. I'm going to talk about one last thing and I'm in the video. I mean, I'm going to go ahead and fix the brakes and go ahead and uh, probably, I have, I'll probably go ahead and just change the wires and just see, see, help cross my fingers and that fixes it. Another thing that I, that I was thinking about before, I know this isn't exactly the same kind of manifold, but it is a dual plane and it, it should be similar. I think one of the questions that people might come up with is like, well, do you run, do you run an O2 sensor on both banks? <coughs> or do you do, <coughs> or is one good enough from one bank? Okay, so as long as you're doing the same amount of turns out on each one, on each side of your carburetor, <laughs> notice how the paths of this go. This side, if this was a four barrel, this side does not feed that side and vice versa. This, this barrel right here feeds two on here and two on this side. You can see the passages. Like this one goes like that. It feeds those, those four cylinders off of this side two on each and then the other one underneath it does the same thing so what I'm trying to point out is I think theoretically speaking that as long as everything else is nothing really crazy going on in there that the other bank should have the same the same air fuel ratio think about it this side feeds two on each and this side feeds two on each so you're so so on this bank you're getting half of each one half your cylinders are one of one side and half is the other and i'll be honest with you i stayed up late last night drawing pictures on paper trying to figure out if that actually does guarantee that they're both the same <laughs> and i don't know but most people just run it off of one bank anyway. The fact that, that the, they're not the same length, maybe that guarantees that it's not the same mixture. But then again, you're still getting two off of one. I don't know. But that's the last thing I want to talk about. If you... Um, I'll try to move forward on doing this and come up with some better stuff once I, once I could actually drive it on the street, but you know, just not, just not ready for that yet. Don't forget to like and subscribe the end.